Hello everybody, this is Carls, your friendly neighborhood violin teacher. Today and for the next few weeks, we are going to be learning how to take care of our violins. Whether you are returning from last year or you're new, we just haven't been able to spend some time learning how to really take care of the violins. And since um, you all now are gonna have violins at your house, this is a really good time to learn. And of course, because violins aren't cheap and they are also very expensive to repair, it's a good thing to know how to not damage them. Um, this video is for everybody. Um, and even if you don't have a violin yet, you still need to watch this video and need to learn because at some point you're gonna get a violin, hopefully sooner rather than later. But um, this is for every NMIS student, uh, the kindergartners, except for the kindergartners, they have a slightly different job this year. But anyway, if you are in first grade, all the way up to seventh grade, this is the video for you, whether or not you have a violin at the moment. So you may notice that you're staring at the floor. That's um, because I haven't put a violin there yet. So let's get ready. So you may notice here, now we're staring at a violin. This is a tiny violin. I chose this, this is actually my daughter's, um, but she's asleep and she's two, so she probably won't mind that we're using it. Um, I chose a tiny violin because it's easy to keep in frame and I chose this setup so hopefully you'll be able to see from a first person perspective how we're going to do this. So let's open up the case and take a look inside. Now there are three things you need to do for everyday practice to get ready to practice and then when you're done practicing there are three things. Number one, clean the strings. Number two, tighten your bow, and number three, put on the shoulder rest. Again, that's clean your strings, tighten your bow, and put on your shoulder rest. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna show you how to do each one of those, and I'm also gonna show you how to undo each one of those. Um, because when you're done practicing, you're gonna need, of course, to loosen your bow, you're gonna need to take off your shoulder rest, and you're gonna need to clean your strings again as well. Um, so let's start with cleaning the strings because it's kind of the easiest one to do. So I have my cleaning cloth here. It's seen better days. And uh, if you don't have a cleaning cloth, don't panic. I'm gonna show you how to make one basically for free uh, later on in this video as well. So take your finger and you just kind of make a really bad ghost costume. Boo. Anyway, and then all you're gonna do is with this setup here, you're gonna go very gently from the end of the fingerboard to the bridge, you're gonna gently sort of just scrub that string, very, very gently. So the G string, scrub, 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 scrub. The D string, scrub, 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 scrub. A string, scrub, 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 scrub. E string, scrub, 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 scrub. This shouldn't take more than about 10 seconds to go through all four strings. If your strings are squeaky, these are not. You'll know, if your strings are squeaky, then they are way too dirty. So be sure you do that. It should take about 10 seconds to clean your strings. You wanna be very careful, though, that this piece here, I'm trying to get the angles right. Ooh, actually, my own daughter's bridge needs to be adjusted here. Um, this piece of wood right here is called the bridge. I know most of you know that. The bridge is not glued to the violin. The bridge is being held up just by the tension of the strings pushing down onto the violin. Um, so if you hit this too hard, you can knock the bridge over. And it's not expensive to fix, but it's annoying to fix <laughs> and it takes some time. So um, and you have to go to the violin shop, or you have to take it to me and none of us wants to deal with that. So as you're scrubbing your strings, be very careful, be very gentle that you don't hit the bridge. You can touch the bridge when you're scrubbing, but don't like hit the bridge really hard or anything like that. Okay, good. So number one, clean your strings. Number two, I think we said was tighten your bow. I don't know which one was that, number two or number three. Probably was number two. So here, if you notice, is the little lock for your bow. Now, most bows have this little sort of lock that comes down and comes back up. So your bow is locked and your bow is unlocked. Sometimes it's a little, it looks like a kind of like a, like a door handle, it can kind of turn. Um, actually like a different sort of door handle that sort of looks like a door handle too. Anyway, so make sure it's down. And different cases have different ways the bows fit. Like my daughter's bow here fits upside down on the top. 
or it fits the other way on the bottom. So in other words, with the horse hair against the edge of the case. Um, you just have to figure out in your own case which way is the best setup. This way doesn't really work. You see there's not room, like it's gonna catch. So you just have to sort of puzzle it out. And then once you know, just remember what you're doing. So anyway, unlock your bow, take it out of the case. And I wanna show you something here too. There's this shiny thing right here called the screw. And the screw actually turns, as you can tell. So notice here too that if we have it very far away here, the horsehair is actually kind of jiggly. It's kind of loose. That's what we want. That's how a bow should be stored with loose horsehair. So if we turn the screw, if I can get it in frame here, if we turn the screw, then the horsehair starts to tighten up. Now it's hard to tell on these skinny little bows. On these um on these tiny bows but you can see the horse hair is a lot less jiggly it has a lot less jiggly now than it used to be so you need to tighten your bow to practice and then when you're done practicing you loosen and there's that old saying if you're like well which way do i turn for what well righty tighty lefty loosey i'm sure a lot of you have heard that use that information here so turn it to the right for tight Right would be that direction. And then turn it to the left, that direction for loose. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Um, and the it's really important that you tighten and loosen your bow because it will lengthen the lifetime of your bow. Let me show you one more thing here, which is, if you notice here, so there's a silver thing here, which some of you may remember the name is called the ferrule. And the ferrule is actually a ring that goes around the horse hair and locks it down at the base here by the frog. There's the frog. This black thing is called the frog. This white thing here is called the slide. Because it, um, yeah, this white thing here is called the slide. And then the silver thing is called the ferrule. So then if we move more to the tip of the bow, Here's the tip of the bow. This is called a tip plate, this kind of white thing here. The horse hair is actually tied in a knot, sort of like you might, um, almost like, actually not really a knot, like a hair tie. Um, kind of like if you do a ponytail yourself, you might put a hair tie in it. It's sort of bundled up in a, in a sort of like a hair tie um, and then stuck in this. There's actually, the, the, the tip of the bow is actually hollow, relatively hollow. And so they just sort of knot it up in sort of a hair tie and stuff it in there and then cover it with a plate. And that locks, that locks the horsehair down. And if you don't tighten, if you keep your bow tight the whole time and you don't, you never ever loosen it, then you stretch out the horsehair and the horsehair gets bad a lot faster. Um, so even really good bows, you should, re, you should get them rehaired every six months, every year. Um, but the less often you loosen your bow, then you, the, the faster you sort of burn out your horsehair. So the rule is only keep your bow tight when you're practicing. When you're not practicing, loosen up your bow. So we've talked about two of the things. We've talked about number one, cleaning your strings. Number two, tightening your bow before you practice and loosening your bow after you practice. And then number three is going to be putting on your shoulder rest. So um, there are sort of two big, big, big types. There are two major types of shoulder rest. And of course, a shoulder rest is a rest <laughs> that goes on your shoulder. You, you've, you've seen them before. Anyway, it's a chunk of plastic or a sponge that sits on your shoulder to help the violin be more comfortable. Um, I prefer personally for myself and for my students to use real shoulder rests over sponges, but some of you may have sponges. Um, so we're gonna start with how to put on a sponge first, and then we'll look at how to put on a shoulder rest. So um, I have a rubber band here. I like. It's really hard to, the contrast is hard to see, but anyway, just so you can kind of see it here. This is a, it's actually a hair tie, but a rubber band will work just fine as well. And so I'm gonna take my hair tie and I'm going to, actually in fact, I am using a hair tie, but I suggest using a rubber band, not just it works fine. I think rubber bands are better, but um, for my daughter's violin, this particular quirk of a hair tie instead works better. So you're gonna take your hair tie and you're just going to loop it over the, the jaw rest just like this. So you can see there's 
It just sort of stood in there. Good, 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 good. Then, now we have this long thing. Then remember the violin's in the air. I'm gonna turn the violin upside down and we still have the rubber band there. And I'm gonna take a little piece of shelf liner like that. Now if you don't have any shelf liner, don't panic. Shelf liner is great because, look how slippery, this is the actual sponge you can see here. The sponge is actually super slippery on the wood. It like moves everywhere. And you kind of don't really want that. But if you have shelf liner, it doesn't go anywhere. So the shelf liner is really, really good. You can still um, put on your sponge and use it and play violin just fine without shelf liner. Um, so don't panic and don't worry if you don't have any. But if you do have it, use it. And I cut it out so it's about the same size. So you can see here's the size of the, of the sponge. The shelf liner more or less fits on it about the same size. The shelf liner should be cut a little bit smaller than the size of the sponge, but I mean, this is not, I mean, <laughs> we're not building a space shuttle here, you know, <laughs> it doesn't have to be that precise. Um, so anyway, there's our little thingy there. And then we stick this here. So shelf liner and then the sponge. Then we take, notice here, the, this corner of the instrument. We're gonna take the rubber band the hair tie and we just stretch this all the way across and connect it to that corner of the violin like this I know it's not super pretty actually that's one of the reasons why I don't like to use these but um, but now it's on and you can see from this side here let me give that nice and low so that is what you want now notice here that the sponge Hopefully the sponge you got is actually kind of lopsided. If you can tell, let me actually get this out of the way. So see the contrast a little better. You might want to notice that this side is actually fatter than that side. You actually want that. So the jaw rest side of the violin should have the, the skinnier part of the sponge and the fatter part should be opposite, kind of nothing. That's because on this side, you're, this is more of your, your shoulder is kind of more on this side and your chest is sort of more on that side. So this helps fill up that space. Um, so that's how you put on a sponge. And to take it off, it's pretty easy. All you do is you just take off that rubber band and then you just take off the two pieces. The rubber band can stay on your violin. The rubber band can stay on your violin even when you put your case, when you put your violin away. Now, super important though, super important. In fact, I'm going to have you stare at a floor just to emphasize this. Never, ever, 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 ever put your violin away in its case with the sponge still on or with the shoulder rest on. The violin should have nothing on it, just like this guy. No shoulder rest, no sponge, then put it away. If you try to put away your violin with the sponge still on it, or with the shoulder rest still on it, you will crush your violin, and that's expensive. <laughs> this right here, by the way, this, this is about a $600 violin, um, and we don't want to crush this thing underneath, um, <laughs> you know, we don't want to have a silly mistake like that. So, super important. That's why we're being so careful now. Take off your sponge or your shoulder rest before you put your violin away. Okay, so those were the three things uh, cleaning your strings, tightening and loosening your bow. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot about, forgot about the shoulder rest. So, um, so we talked about sponge, so the shoulder rest here. So, uh, the, um, my daughter's violin is actually, I don't have a, a two-year-old size shoulder rest, so I'm going to use my ordinary teaching violin, which you might remember. It's got the lion head and stuff like that. So, uh, anyway, this is this violin, so I have the back here. Now, super important, is when you're putting on, it doesn't matter whether you're putting on a sponge or a shoulder rest, to not crush the bridge, that guy right there. Um, as I said earlier, right, like the weight of the strings, the pressure on the strings is what keeps the bridge upright, but the bridge is, as you can tell, a pretty skinny piece of wood, so not very sturdy. So it's not meant to hold weight. So your violin should never ever be upside down on the ground, never, 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 never. It's okay to set it down on the ground if you have to, gently, on its back like that. This is totally okay. Of course, just don't step on it, but this is not going to damage the violin as it is. 
never rest it on its side like this. Never do this either. Um, if I let go, you see the violin actually isn't tipping over, but it's really it's really unbalanced. So it's and the violins are not meant to do this. Um, so only on its back, never on its side. And of course, I'm holding it. Don't worry, I'm not setting it on the ground. Never upside down as well. Never upside down. You have to set it on the ground. Set it on its back, just like that. So, now of course, to put on a shoulder rest, we do have to turn the violin upside down, but that doesn't mean we rest it on the ground. We don't rest it on the ground. So let me show you, though, the differences between a sponge and a shoulder rest. So, they're actually, actually substantially different. So, here's a sponge. Here is a shoulder rest. And you can see that the only thing pretty much they have in common is that they both sort of, you can tell here that they dip. So the this side is lower, just like here this side is fatter. This side is skinnier. This side is higher. It's probably easier to tell with contrast. The shadow's kind of in the way, but you get the idea. Anyway, so the point is that this side of the shoulder rest, this side of the sponge, are the sides that go sort of more on your chest to help hold up the violin, to help fill up that space between the bottom of the violin kind of and your chest. Um, so, of course, these are meant to fit very different instruments. This is much smaller, but they make smaller shoulder rests. I just don't have one. Um, you can tell though, the reason why I prefer shoulder rests is that they look a little bit nicer. They last a lot longer. They have these convenient little feet to slide on. So basically, they look better, they do a better job, and they aren't as much of a, of a hassle. Um, now, if you have a sponge, you know, that's okay. Like, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to get a shoulder rest, you don't have to do anything different. If, if your sponge works, then great. Um, I'm just trying to show you why I prefer a shoulder rest to a sponge. I very occasionally have students who need a sponge instead of a shoulder rest for the, how their shoulder is built, you know, how their bodies are built, it just doesn't make sense. But that's pretty, un, that's pretty uncommon. So, <clears throat> shoulder rest, how to put one on is, we take this guy and have this upside down, or I'm holding it in the air. Usually we do this in your lap. You would sort of sit cross-legged um, and put the violin upside down in your lap. That's the best way to do that. Um, and then we take the shoulder rest here. Now notice the curve of the shoulder rest. The curve is sort of concave. Concave as in like, makes a cave concave to the edge of the violin. And then, if I can show you guys here, you kind of use the feet to grip the sides of the violin. Use one foot at a time. So I'm locking down this foot, and this foot is free. And then we kind of scooch it over to lock down that side. And you can see how it just sort of slides on like that. You might be able to um, actually, we might be able to adjust this a little bit so you can sort of see from a different angle how this actually works. So we're going to give that a shot. Um, stand by while you get dizzy here, but that's okay. Right, easier to see me from this direction here. So, the violin. Okay, actually, that's a much better view. So again, we put one foot on this side, and you can see how this edge here, this edge here is what the feet sort of hook onto. You can even see there's a little slot. <laughs> um, there's even a little slot right here that the feet, that the feet sort of run into that edge with. So again, just like this, scooch that down. And then again, this other side is free. That side is free. And this other long. Now, it's sort of different, it's slightly different from violin to violin, how far up. But I would say between the corners, so this is the corner, and sort of here's the very here's like the, the bottom bout. So I'd say halfway or a little bit less. 
you don't want this thing, the shoulder rest shouldn't be way up here. It should be like, yeah, maybe a third or a quarter of the way up. And of course, if, you're, if your feet are too close together, don't force this. If the violin really, if your feet are too, if the feet on the shoulder rest are too close together, then it will be able to slide up onto the violin. So um, you, your feet have to be adjusted the right size so the violin isn't <coughs> too big for it or too small for it. And you can tell, you can adjust it because look, you see there's little holes, there's little screws, right? You can just, uh, the feet basically behave like a little screw. So you can unscrew them. And then you just you, you can you can decide how wide with three little holes on that side, depending on the kind of shoulder rest you have. And it also works on the other side as well, this side here. Um, so how wide, how, how where your feet go are based on what size violin you have. So you might have to play with it. This might take you a, a few days to get the right width. That's fine. It might be annoying, but it's better than having a shoulder rest that always falls off, which is, by the way, it's a good way to tell, right? If your shoulder rest is always falling off, then your feet might be too far apart. If, if on the other hand, you can't get your shoulder rest on your violin at all, then your feet are probably too far in together, probably in too narrow. Um, so, um, you're just going to have to spend some time playing with that. So that's how you put on and take off a shoulder rest. And I think to be super safe, I may have already said this, um, I lost the feed in the previous video, just to be super safe, never, ever, ever put your violin away in its case with the shoulder rest on or with the sponge on. I promise you, you will crush your violin. Not worth the money to do that. So, um, so for the next few days, uh, there's probably, there probably is more we can do, but actually I think I want to, I want to say that, I think this video has been long enough. Um, so the next video will be released on Friday morning. And we're going to talk a little bit more about um, who can handle your violin besides yourself, where you store your violin, where you um, where you store it, what you should keep in your case. Um, oh, we talked about how to make a cleaning cloth, uh, which we didn't get a chance to do today, and um, what to do if something breaks, which may happen. You know how to handle that if something breaks, and um, rosining your bow, inspecting your violin. We'll do more of that stuff on Friday's video. So thanks for sticking around, and uh, we'll be in touch on Friday. Bye.